What is up? It's Blim. Welcome back to my channel. Hi, how are you doing? Happy Sunday. This one is going to be a voiceover because there's a lot in it that I want to talk about. As you might have gathered, we are going to be talking about all the Trisha Paytas drama, the Dirty Dom drama, the Petty Page video, the mysterious case of Trisha Paytas. There's quite a lot of things that I want to talk about. This video is basically just going to be my commentary on recent events with all of that stuff. Firstly, I'm sorry if the audio sounds really bad or busted. I've been having some issues with my phone and I've been hoping that they're going to work themselves out very soon. So, fingers crossed for that. But let's get into this video. Before I start, I am going to say that some of the topics in this video could potentially be very triggering to survivors of SA or R word. So, that is out there just as a warning to anyone watching, but we're going to get into it. So, recently, of course, there's been a lot of drama with Trisha Paytas and this Mr. Riney situation where Trisha Paytas has alleged that this teacher assaulted her, essayed her rather, when she was six years old at school. Now it's all come out that Trisha Paytas actually might have lied about that situation and there's been somebody come forward from Trisha Paytas school who allegedly corroborates Trisha's story. So recently drama channel Petty Page uploaded a video called The Mysterious Case of Trisha Paytas. I sat and watched this video, all of it, with an open mind. Honestly, you know, I'm not a big fan of Trish, I never have been, but I sat and watched Paige's video with an open mind. So Paige got to a part in the video where Paige was talking about this ex-classmate of Trisha's, a girl called Morgan. Now Morgan has come forward, kind of corroborated Trish's story about Mr. Riney, the teacher who allegedly assaulted Trisha when they were six years old at school. Morgan also claims that they are a survivor of Mr. Riney. Now, a lot of people have got problems with Trisha talking about this Mr. Riney assaulting them because people are saying, well, you don't go in front of a judge at six years old without any parents, all of this stuff, which, to be honest, I agree with. There are so many holes in Trisha's story. Trisha has contradicted themselves time and again when talking about this Mr. Riney situation. And honestly, after 15 years of Trisha Paytas trolling and contradicting themselves on the internet, on YouTube for 15 years, it's just too hard for me now to take anything that Trisha Paytas says seriously. As I sat watching Paige's video, the part where Paige was talking about this Morgan, the alleged ex-classmate of Trisha Paytas. At the time on Twitter, I'd seen people speculating that Morgan was actually Trisha, but what I actually think it is, is I think that Morgan is somebody that was paid possibly by Trisha Paytas themselves to corroborate Trisha's essay story to make it look more believable. Honestly, after seeing everything with Paige's video, and with everything else on the internet, with this Morgan account on Twitter, I genuinely feel like they were someone who was paid by Trisha or by Trisha's people to corroborate Trisha's story to make it sound more believable. At the end of Paige's video, she seemed to be trying to defend Trisha, saying that we should believe survivors, we should believe Trisha's story about SA and have compassion for them as an SA survivor. Now, while I want to always believe survivors, being a survivor myself, while I always want to believe survivors, I have a problem with this. The fact that Trish has contradicted themselves so many times over this story, and then at the last minute, as Trisha was getting a lot of hate and a lot of heat over it, oh, up pops this Morgan, the ex-classmate, with their story suddenly. I just found the timing all very kind of suspicious and I can't take it as fact right now. I can't take the whole Morgan thing as fact. 
While I'm saying that I don't believe Trisha was assaulted by the teacher, Mr. Riney, that they claim they were assaulted by, I'm not saying that Trish has never experienced SA in their life. You know, I do think that Trish has possibly experienced some SA in their life. I think it might have happened in childhood, and I think they are possibly carrying some kind of childhood trauma with them into their adult life. And I think during their career on YouTube, I think they have been able to use that to maybe manipulate people to get what they want out of people. Let's not forget that Trisha has said in their own words that they learn during childhood if they made people feel guilty that they would get what they wanted. So this is a behaviour that we're seeing from Trisha. It's a pattern of behaviour that's gone on and on and on for the last 15 years throughout their whole YouTube career. It's happening as they're trying to bring other creators down constantly. Shane Dawson, Ryland Adams, Jeffree Star, and a whole host of others in the vlog squad, which we'll get into in a moment. To go back to Trisha Paytas, their behavior, what I find really, really troubling is it's clear that they've used mental health as some kind of weapon, some kind of shield to hide behind as they've been getting all of this hate over the Mr. Riney incident. They've been getting so much hate and they've been bringing up BPD, the fact that they're going into therapy, everything like this. I also have BPD. I've been to group DBT therapy and all of this stuff, so I know what it's like to live with BPD. What I find extremely problematic in Trish saying that, trying to use BPD as something to hide behind as an excuse for their behaviour. What I find problematic about that is they've also previously self-diagnosed themselves with schizophrenia. Then it turned out that they didn't have schizophrenia. And then way before that, they also trolled another channel that was focused on mental health. It was a channel called Disassocia Did, which is a channel for disassociative identity disorder, which if you don't know, is a multiple personality disorder. So Trisha has previously trolled other people when it comes to mental health topics but when it comes to their own mental health they expect people to be forgiving have compassion and it's like well where was your compassion Trish for the mental health channel that you trolled you know I can't have compassion for somebody like that when they're not having compassion for somebody else. So the end of Petty Page's video was kind of geared to sort of making you feel sorry for Trisha Paytas because they've been a victim of SA. Plenty of us out here in the drama commentary community have also been victims of SA but we don't do the things that Trisha does in lying about who did it and all of this. We're not behaving in that way. If we did, we would expect to be punished. Trisha, I think, expects to get away with it, and I don't know why. I think that is very messed up behaviour. The other issue I have with believing Trisha Paytas when it comes to this Mr. Riney essay story is that Trisha Paytas' own fiancé, Moses Hackman, is also accused of stealthing on a girl. Now, if you don't know what that is, it's when you split a condom on a girl that you're having sex with. So, Moses Hackman is also accused of essay himself. Trisha Paytas victim blamed Moses alleged victim. So if Trisha wants us to have sympathy for them, how about Trisha having a little bit of sympathy for the girl that Moses allegedly assaulted? You know, oh, perhaps it doesn't matter. You know, oh, what is it? It's believe all victims until the victim is somebody that you don't like. Now I'm going to be moving on slightly to the topic of the vlog squad, in particular, Dirty Dom. Dirty Dom came out the other day in a 10 minute kind of YouTube video where he sat with somebody called Cassandra, who was an actual witness to everything that went down at the time. The vlog squad did that fivesome bit for their vlog, the one that Kat Tenbarge, the journalist with Insider reported on. So we're going to get into this because Dirty Dom came out with his 10 minute YouTube video and he was talking about the incident with Hannah, the girl that he is accused of R wording. So he gets talking about it and throughout this 10 minute video, all Dom really said was that he was blaming David, David Dobrik for leaving the video up when Hannah had asked for it to be removed. Dom didn't really talk about what he did 
to Hannah on why that was wrong. He didn't talk about the fact that Hannah was blackout drunk during that day. He didn't talk about the fact that she was too blackout drunk to consent to any kind of sexual act. He just talked about the fact that he'd spoken to Hannah after the incident. They talked about doing Dom's nails because Dom always messes up his nails when he paints his nails himself. Now, to me, that part had absolutely no relevance to the topic, which was the topic of Dom allegedly essaying a girl called Hannah, allegedly R-wording her. You know, it's a very serious topic. And to make it about something frivolous like, oh, well, she was going to come around and paint my nails for me. That to me was not needed, not necessary. We didn't need to know that information. And at the end of the day, it was a screenshot of some text messages, which can be easily faked, in my opinion. So to me, that held no relevance to the actual situation. It was Dom very much trying to cover his ass and blame David Dobrik for something that he did. Now, I'm sure that many of you who've clicked on this video will be aware that this is also connected to the one and only Trisha Paytas because Trisha called this behaviour out on Frenemies. That's how this kind of situation originally came to light was Trisha Paytas on YouTube tried calling it out back in the day and nobody really listened to them. So once Trisha was on Frenemies with Ethan Klein, Trisha called this incident out and Trisha really made this story blow up about Dom and about David and about Jeff Whitek. Trisha made this story blow up on the Frenemies platform. And then from there, Kat Tenbarge, journalist with Insider, put out an article on this fivesome bit, this situation between the vlog squad and these young women, which then had a knock-on effect, which caused Jeff Whitek and David Dobrik to lose a lot of sponsorships. David Dobrik lost his sponsorship with Seatwave and all these big sponsorships he had, despite him not being the one who was actually accused of R-wording a girl. Now, I'm not saying that David Dobrik is a saint in any way, shape or form. I mean, look at what happened with David Dobrik and Jeff Whitek with the whole incident where Jeff nearly lost his eye and everything. You know, that whole mess. Oh, my God. I am not saying that David Dobrik is innocent in this at all. But what I am saying is I find it very, very bizarre how journalist from Business Insider, Kat Tenbarge, went after David Dobrik and Jeff Whitek at the time this story came out, instead of going after Dom, the person who was actually accused of R-wording Hannah. I mean, it certainly seemed more important to Kat Tenbarge to go after Jeff Whitek for being the one who allegedly bought the alcohol for the underage girls. You know, it seemed much more important to Kat to make sure that David Dobrik and Jeff Whitek got punished for being accomplices in this situation rather than actually going after Dirty Dom, who was the one who actually is alleged to have committed the whole crime, you know, which I find really bizarre. If you're going to be standing up for survivors, then why are you not going after the man who allegedly assaulted Hannah in the first place? Why has it taken until now for Kat Tenbarge to speak out about Dirty Dom? I have a sneaking suspicion that Kat Tenbarge, journalist with Insider, is only now talking about Dirty Dom because Trisha Paytas is under so much scrutiny. I have a feeling that this whole vlog squad Dirty Dom situation has come back around to try and take some of the heat off of Trisha Paytas. When this story broke on Frenemies, they played a video clip where you could clearly see that this Hannah girl was paralytic drunk, being held up by her friend. She was in no fit state to consent to having a fivesome or doing a bit that was supposed to be a fivesome. She was in no fit state to be doing any sexual act, to consent to any sexual act. So the point is, Hannah should not have been there. She should have been driven home, you know, as a survivor myself. This is something that I can find very upsetting and very kind of triggering and it makes me frustrated and angry to talk about it a little bit because I know what it's like to be in Hannah's shoes you know at the time of my assault I wasn't paralytic drunk but 
just because a girl is paralytic drunk, it doesn't give you the right to do things to her. And that is something that I find very, very uncomfortable. You know, I want to leave this video by saying that for Hannah, I hope that she knows that what happened that night, whatever it was with Dom, wasn't her fault. And I hope that she's been able to get the help that she's needed. I hope that she's been able to report the incident if something genuinely very terrible happened to her. I hope she's been able to go and file a police report about it. And I it. would also urge anyone who's been R-worded or essayed to report what happens to you. Or if you have a friend who it's happened to, maybe offer to go with them to report what's happened. Because I honestly don't think that YouTube and the Court of Public Opinion can do anything anything at all when it comes to cases of R word and SA I don't think it should be handled on YouTube you know it's not tea it's not drama it's crime you know I don't think it's something that should be left to be dealt with on YouTube so guys I'm gonna say take care stay safe stay well please do let me know all your thoughts comments and opinions in the comments down below I will see you on the next one. Thank you so much for watching. Love you guys. Happy Sunday. Bye-bye.